How does Pokemon handle status conditions? And how would I handle them if I was making a creature collector? This video is part of a series where I've been talking about how I would develop my own creature collector, similar to Pokemon, but with some major changes. In this video, I'll be looking at how Pokemon handles status conditions and seeing what changes I would do to it. This video is brought to you by the members of the Crustacean Association, Bill B, Finnegan Cleary and Aidan Tawney. Thank you for supporting the channel. Status conditions are a major part of Pokemon. From that very first time you go through Viridian Forest, you learn how important they are. Entire teams can be based around specific status conditions, and they can really make or break a battle for you. In Pokemon, there are two different types of status conditions, volatile and non-volatile. Volatile conditions are ones that are cured on switch out or at the end of a battle. And this is things like confusion, infatuation or taunt. They only apply for a short period of time and you can very easily get rid of them. Try and guess what non-volatile status conditions do. They're often permanent and hard to get rid of. And even if you switch out or end a battle, they can still continue. Some status conditions like sleep or freeze will naturally go away but a lot of them can only be solved by a direct action by the trainer. It's these non-volatile status conditions that are definitely the most impactful on the game. They are incredibly powerful, and because they stick around, they can often have game-defining conditions to them. If you're relying on a physical attacker, and they suddenly get burnt, you're really stuck. As unless you have a designated cleric on your team, you're really going to struggle to make that Pokemon any kind of useful. Both volatile and non-volatile status conditions both have various ways of applying, whether this is through added effects, abilities, or just direct moves. Sleep is by far the best and most impactful status condition in the game, as it provides you with both space and time. Sleep will incapacitate a Pokemon for 1-3 to three turns, which is an incredibly powerful effect. It allows things like setup sweepers to just be unchallenged and often forces your opponent to switch, again giving you another free turn. There is a reason why most metagames have a sleep clause, and multiple generations have outright banned sleep due to the sheer power that it has. Sleep is balanced out by the fact that it's somewhat hard to set up. Most sleep moves are inaccurate, and there are very few moves that have a secondary effect that will set up sleep. The one consistent sleep move, Spore, is incredibly powerful, often making the Pokemon that have access to it good just because they have Spore, or at least making one of them good, because it's the only reason to use many of these Pokemon, so you might as well use the best one. If sleep is the best status condition, I would say that Poison is really the most fleshed out of them all. It feels to me like the default status condition, it doesn't have any bells or whistles, but it has lots of different ways it can be embellished and different ways that it can be used. Poison is actually two different status conditions, Poison and Toxic Poison, although in-game there's very little that actually differentiates these. They both just appear as Poison, it's only in the text where one of them says that they're badly poisoned. Regular Poison deals a set amount of damage per turn meaning that it's very good for getting rid of things like leftovers or just applying chip to a Pokemon that doesn't heal. Toxic Poison is far more popular, as every turn it increases the amount of damage it will deal to the target. This means that it's very good in long, drawn-out battles, making it one of the pillars of stall alongside Regenerator and Unaware. Generally, if you're looking to just weaken a Pokemon but aren't that invested in actually outlasting them, You'll just want generic poison, but if you're actively trying to make your opponent die the slowest death possible, you'd go for toxic poison. One of the reasons why I think poison is so fleshed out as a status condition is due to the fact that it has its own type. Whilst many other status conditions are associated with a type, the poison type literally shares its name with its status condition. Many of poison's moves are based around the idea of setting poison or exploiting poison, and there are lots of different ways that you can do it. One of the best ways is Toxic Spikes, which sets up two different layers, the first layer just doing regular poison and the second layer badly poisoning. This means you can get amazing value from just one or two turns, but at the cost that any other poison type can just absorb these up and those two turns are spent for nothing. It's a really interesting mechanic, and to me it's the reason why poison is the most well-designed of these status conditions. 
it really feels like it could be a strategy. If you're a fan of the channel, you'll know that I also really like the poison type, just because it really plays into the idea of the status. Paralysis is probably the only status condition that can rival sleep in terms of value. Something I always found really weird is that it's presented much more like a static shock rather than real life paralysis which is much more of a physical and nerve injury. In the anime and in the games it's shown to be very electrical. I know that nerves have things to do with electricity but it's always looked more like someone has just been electrocuted rather than specifically paralysed. The reason why paralysis is so good is because it targets a stat that pretty much every Pokemon needs. Barring some moves like Trick Room and then some Pokemon who want to be slow pivots, there is probably not a scenario where you want less speed. Even a slow bulky wall doesn't appreciate having its speed cut. Compare this to Burn whose side effect only targets less than half of all Pokemon and you can start to see why it's such a powerful effect. This isn't even beginning to talk about the psychological warfare that paralysis can cause. Due to the fact that a quarter of the time you're just not going to use a move, it introduces the idea of chance and doubt into your opponent's mind. When a Pokemon is paralysed, you really have to cover your bases, because they could literally just do nothing for a single turn, and turns are so important that this can absolutely ruin any game for you. I mentioned it a little bit before, but Burn is almost as good as Paralysis but it's a bit more situational. Some Pokemon don't really care about a burn and it's basically just the same as poison to them. It also has a far less effective effect, just dealing damage. It doesn't quite sow the seeds of doubt that paralysis does. Burn is a very good status condition, however. It can completely shut down most physical attackers and during its heyday with Scold being absolutely everywhere, it really, really crippled physical attackers. On certain Pokemon, Burn is absolutely amazing, but I would say Paralysis is a bit more generally good. Freeze is unilaterally agreed to be the worst status condition in the game, and that's because it's entirely chance-based, and it has such a powerful effect. It's essentially the same as Sleep, with you being unable to move for that turn, However, it has a 20% chance of unfouring you every turn, or if you get hit by a fire move. This means that there's not really a way to plan around freeze. If you get frozen, it just becomes a numbers game, and if you get really unlucky, there's nothing you can do about it. At least with sleep, you know that it's going to end at some point, but a few bad dice rolls and you're suddenly frozen for a ridiculously long time. Freeze is also terrible due to the fact that there's no way to guarantee it goes up. Freeze can only be caused by a side effect of attacking moves, so there is literally no way that you can build a strategy about it. It's all luck. This is why the change to Frostbite was much appreciated. I have literally never heard anybody say anything bad about the new change to Frostbite, even though I'm now going to. I think it was a bit of a cop-out that they just made it a burn reskin but for special. I think that they could have done something way more interesting with it. And also, they should add it into the main series game. At least it's better than the god-awful freeze. I'll only briefly talk about the volatile conditions in Pokemon, as they're mainly situational. The main two that you're going to see are Taunt and Confusion. Taunt is a really unique move and is great for stall breakers or anti-leads when they were a thing. They make it so that for free turns, your opponent is unable to use status moves. This is a really great game design on Pokemon's part, as it gives you a great counterplay to things like stall or leads. Confusion, on the other hand, is just annoying. Nobody has ever said a good thing about Confusion once, and if you do for some reason really like it, you're most likely a Tentacool or a Zubat. So having gone over most of these status conditions, how would I actually change them in the game? The first thing I would do is make the change to volatility. I would have most status conditions work in a way similar to being volatile. This is because I think most status conditions are really too game changing. I think that this leads to one major issue, and that is that they take away a lot of fun. How many times do you think you get in a good scenario and then your Pokemon gets paralyzed? 
or you set up a sweeper and then you get burnt. It just takes away a lot of the fun for these effects to be permanent. I know personally I'm really paranoid about always having clerics on my team because I just hate having to work with status conditions. I would have it be so that on switch out most of these conditions will just naturally go away. Meaning that when you switch in you get a brand new slate to work with. I think that that would really help get away from that all or nothing idea that the current status conditions have. For specific changes, let's start with sleep. I think sleep is very well designed, but I'm against it being up to chance. I'm generally against most things being up to chance, especially something as powerful as sleep. Instead, let's lock it to a set number of turns, which I'll think would be two. I also think it should be a bit of an investment. It's a really powerful effect, and you're able to just spring it on a Pokemon naturally. This is why I think all sleep should now come with the effect of being drowsy. Pokemon does have a system similar to drowsy with yawn. This is a way of getting guaranteed sleep on the field, but it does mean you have to wait a turn. I don't necessarily want to copy Pokemon's idea for drowsy, but I would instead have it that you can't make a Pokemon go to sleep straight away, it's always at the end of a turn. One of the reasons why I said most status conditions should be volatile is that I don't think this should be the case with sleep. Sleep is meant to be the most powerful status condition. You could even have the sleep timer effect still going on while they're in the party. So even when switched out, they are still waking up. In one of my previous videos, I briefly mentioned about having certain move categories for moves. And one of these would be punching moves. I think it would be really cool if one of the side effects of all punching moves were that they always woke up a sleeping Pokemon. Poison probably has the biggest changes to all of these status conditions. For one, I'm combining it back all into one specific status condition. This condition will work similar to how Toxic works, slowly building up over time, increasing the pressure. Again, I wouldn't have this be volatile either, as getting rid of Poison is really difficult, but I would have it so that the timer ticks down a step every time they're switched out. The major difference that I have from Pokemon is that I'm not going to have a poison type. As much as I love the poison type for the fact that it's interesting and it's one of the least conventional types in Pokemon, I think that the idea of poison could be democratized amongst a number of different types. You have some of the nature types like grass or bug, or some of the industrial types like fire or steel. I think that between those, they could kind of carry the burden that poison already does. This would really help the idea of it being the default status. It's open to a wide range of Pokemon compared to the other status conditions, which are generally specific to a niche. I'm not going to go too much onto why I want to get rid of the type. I'm going to make a different video about that now, but I just wanted to introduce it here. For the other conditions, I want them to be a bit of a type-based status condition, similar to Burn, Paralysis, Freeze. Burn is one of the two that I want to keep. Similar to in Pokemon, it's going to do damage over time to the user. But one of the ways it's going to differentiate is that it's not going to have any effect on things like attack power. Burns can be very difficult to heal. So I'm going to make it that any Pokemon who is burnt can't heal. This way it would be an amazing stall breaker status condition. As you could put a Pokemon in a scenario where they're taking damage and they can't heal. Basically forcing them to switch out. One of the more unique conditions I want to add is waterlogged. This would be associated with the water type. And what it would do is it would lower the speed of the user similar to how paralysis works. If you watch my previous videos, you'll remember that the game is much more of a strategy RPG, with the Pokemon being able to move around the board and interact with each other in that way. This is where Waterlog's secondary effect would come in, as it would lower the action points available to the affected Pokemon by one. It would mean that maybe they wouldn't be able to move as far on the board. Shocked would be my version of Paralysis associated with Electricity. As I really didn't like the chance space mechanics of how Paralysis works, this version is going to be completely different. As being shocked often causes muscle spasms, I think it would make sense that this would lower the attacking power of physical moves as you just have less control over your body. This attack debuff wouldn't be as strong as the current burn attack debuff. It would be much more manageable, and remember you can always switch out. To make it a bit more powerful, I'm also going to make it so that it also deals damage every turn. This essentially makes it very similar to how burn works in traditional Pokemon. 
my version of Frozen is not going to cause you to lose turns. Instead, it's going to provide you a defensive debuff. I think it makes sense as being Frozen would make you much more brittle. And it's a trope in media that when a Pokemon is frozen, you can very easily smash them. This would be just for physical attacks, meaning that you have one status condition that buffs the power of physical attacks and one that weakens them. I'm also going to give it the speed lowering effect from Waterlogged, as I think that fits in with the idea of being frozen. Those six status conditions would be the main six that I'm going with, and maybe I'll come up with a few more in the future. Something like Dazed could definitely work similar to the idea of how Pokemon uses flinching. To make these a bit more dynamic, I also think that you should have some unique interactions with them. So a Pokemon who is waterlogged could take more damage from electric attacks, or something that already happens in Pokemon, with fire being able to remove the status condition of being frozen. Just little things like that, but I think that they're really important. If you've enjoyed this video or want to see more from this topic, I have a lot of ideas, so... I would love to just explain them all. Please consider leaving a like or a subscribe. I hope I've earned it and thank you for watching.